Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Sneha Patel from MB Patel English Medium Secondary and Higher Secondary School. Students, let us study Psychology of Standard 12th. In our previous class, we started with Chapter 2 and the name of the chapter is Learning Skills. In that, we dealt with the definition and aspects of learning. Today, in this chapter itself, we shall move on to the next topic and that is methods of learning. Today, we shall learn two methods. The first one is learning by emulation. It is through modeling or imitation. And the second one is learning by trial and error. Let us begin with the first one. Learning by emulation through imitation. This is the very basic method of learning. Most of the learning done by a child is through emulation. Learning by emulation is called observational or social learning. Child observes the environment, the people in the environment accurately and then imitates them. It is a social learning because the societal rules and regulations have to be followed in displaying of the behavior. Observation is the most important source of emulation. If we observe accurately, then we can imitate nicely. An individual learns through observation from his or her surrounding environment and then emulates. Emulation means learning through observation. We can also say modeling or imitation. Like the elders, the people around the child provides an example for the child to copy, to imitate. Okay? And in this way, learning takes place. Learning by emulation. Observe the given images. You can understand how learning by emulation takes place. Children learn from the surrounding environment. They try to imitate their elders, parents, teachers and all the people surrounding in their environment. They learn to cook, shave, follow a healthy lifestyle. In walking, in talking on phone, dressing and also every child must have imitated their teachers. This is learning by emulation. The second method is learning by trial and error. We will study the experiment given by Edward Thorndike. American psychologist Thorndike conducted an experiment of learning by trial and error. He prepared a puzzle box in such a way that when the lever inside the box is pressed, then only the door would open. Let us go through the experiment. The experiment of trial and error was conducted on a cat. Thorndike put a hungry cat in the puzzle box and put food just outside the box in such a way that it could be seen by the hungry cat. When the cat is hungry and it sees the food outside, what will it do? When the cat was put inside the box, it tried to come out of it in order to get the food. The cat repeated many attempts to get out of the box. It scratched, pulled at the bars of the puzzle box and roamed about in the box so that it can come out and eat the food. Here in this picture we can see the cat trying to come out of the box and get the food which is kept outside the box. 
The cat continued to do the same kind of behavior, like scratching, pulling at the bars and roaming around. By doing so, not on purpose, but accidentally, the cat happened to press the lever and the door of the puzzle box opened. The door was opened accidentally and the cat was not aware that by pressing the lever, the door would open. So when the cat was put again in the puzzle box, it went through a series of incorrect responses before pressing the lever. So what is expected from the cat to do? That it should get inside the box, it should learn to press the lever in order to get out of the box. But the first attempt was done accidentally and the learning did not take place in the very first attempt. So the next time also when the cat was put inside the box, it started its former behavior like scratching and pulling and roaming around instead of directly coming and pressing the lever. So learning through trial is taking place here. But while attempting many errors, many incorrect responses are also given by the cat. Thondike, the experimenter, wanted the cat to learn to press the lever so that the door would open and it could have the food. This was learning going to take place through trial and error. Many attempts were made by the cat. Many incorrect responses were also given by the cat. But finally, repeatedly, when it was put in the box, it learned to come out of it by pressing the lever. Thondike continued with the same experiment for 24 days. When the hungry cat was put in the puzzle box during the 24th trial, it immediately pressed the lever and came out of the box. So learning has taken place here. In this way, the cat learned to perform the act of pressing the lever to open the door. It was given the practice repeatedly and because of that repetition, the cat understood that in order to come out of the box, it has to press the lever. We'll look at some important points here. In trial and error learning, as the trial increases, the time taken to learn and the errors both decrease. It is a fact that initially the task will seem difficult, but then if it is repeatedly done by you, then that difficulty level will go away and your expertise in performing that task will be brought about. So, more the trials, less the errors and also the time taken to perform will also decrease. We'll do the task quickly. In the first trial, the cat took 160 seconds to press the lever and open the door. And how much time it would have taken on the 24th day? On the 24th trial, it just took 10 seconds to press the lever and open the door. So here you can see that as the trial increased, the performance also was becoming better and quicker. Thus, the cat became progressively quicker at escaping from the puzzle box. Learning took place very nicely, accurately. The cat learned to get out of the box. Here we can observe learning taking place by trial and error. When Thondike put the hungry cat inside the box, it, he also put the food outside it. Cat wanted to grab at it, but couldn't. It had to come out. It made many attempts incorrect responses. It made many errors, but it kept on trying. And then finally, 
it learned that if it has to come out of the box, it has to press the lever in order to get the food. And in this way, learning took place by trial and error. More the trials, lesser the errors and learning will be accurate. We shall now watch the video of learning by trial and error which I found from the YouTube. I am very sure that after watching it, the experiment will be very clear to you and also the points which are to be learned from the experiment. You will understand them in a better way. But how is a new skill learned? That was a question which began to fascinate Thorndike. To answer it, he built some ingenious puzzle boxes from which cats could only escape by operating latches. And in you go. The cat appears to be very clever in engineering its escape, solving the problem with a deftly placed paw and a push of its nose. Thorndike didn't believe that an animal, even a clever cat, understands the consequences of its behavior. When he placed a cat in the puzzle box for the first time, Thorndike was unable to see any evidence of flashes of insight. The successful actions appeared first by chance. He proved that the apparent cleverness arose by trial and error and used graphs to measure the rate of learning. A well-practiced cat quickly recalls the actions that help it escape to its reward of food. brings a reward, Thorndike believed that that action becomes stamped into the mind. Here are some points to remember. As the trial increases, error decreases. Finally, learning takes place without any error. Example, solving maths puzzles, riding a bicycle, typing on the keyboard, learning musical instruments, etc. When learning takes place through trial and errors, then that learning would be very accurate. As it is said that practice makes a person perfect. It indeed does that. Because when we are faced with a task, initially it may seem very difficult. But without getting demotivated or without being negative, if we keep on trying, to perform that task, finally, through practice, we would be accurate in performing that task. Difficult task takes time, students. But if you do not give up, with positivity, if you continue, then that task will become simpler and you will be able to perform that task quickly. This is how learning takes place through trial and error. Observe these images keenly. You will understand that learning is taking place through trial and error method. In the very first picture, we can see the Rubik's Cube. Initially, it will take time, a lot of time. To solve the puzzle. But finally, through practice and through perseverance, you do not have to give it up. You learn to solve it. You must remember 
that when you started riding a bicycle, many times you would have fallen. But then through practice, you learned to ride the bicycle. Even in singing, practice is required to achieve perfection. While typing on the keyboard, it takes time to understand where the letters are. But once you keep on practicing, you'll understand all the letters which are there on the keyboard and the speed of typing will increase and the errors would decrease. Have you ever made roti, chapati? The very first one, was that round? Well, if it, if it was, then you are an artist. But many people experience that the very first attempt or the second and third, the chapatis would not be round. But through practice, you will learn to roll the round perfect chapatis. Also, applying makeup requires practice. Through trial and error, we can learn. More the practice, less the error. And the learning would be accurate. What do we learn from the theory of trial and error? Learning can take place when the individual shows readiness to learn. If there is readiness, we can learn. Otherwise, we cannot. Motivation is necessary in learning. If you are motivated enough, then you can learn. It's not necessary that if others ask you to do something, then only you will do it. No, you should have that urge from within that you want to learn something. That motivation should be there within you. Then only learning can take place. Learning takes place through repetition and practice. Repetition, practice, these two things are a must. Learning should be made purposeful and goal-directed. If we learn something, it should be useful to us. It should be purposeful. It shouldn't be learned just for the sake of learning. Then that learning wouldn't be accurate but if the learning is purposeful and goal-directed then there will be accuracy in learning reward makes learning faster and motivational the cat learned to come out of the box why because it wanted to eat the food that was kept outside so if we are rewarded for our behavior then learning can take place faster. Various solutions should be tried in order to solve a problem before arriving at the correct one. Then the learning would be accurate. We will understand between the wrong response and the right response, the difference between the wrong and the right response. Then learning would be accurate. Experience, proper training, and lots of practice is required to learn things properly. Learning can take place through observation, emulation, and also by trial and error. That we studied today. I hope these two topics are clear to you. Kindly prepare the notes. Study well. Thank you so much.